I mean, she was eating both of our snacks. So there's that. Thought you'd like to know my Oreo story. Siblings. So they stay. She'll just eat whatever. Okay. Brooke, is your mic working now? Sing your favorite song. See if your mic works. Sorry, can you say that again? I was waiting for you to sing Adele, Hello from the Other Side. Yeah. I'm joking. You want to sing with? I'll sing it with you. Okay, you ready? Hello from the other side. Okay, okay, it works. Thank you. Hello. That song's been stuck in my head. Yeah, don't ask. Josh, you have to take off your hoodie, buddy. Okay, let's get started. We're at The Seekers by Herb Connie. Everybody have their books, highlighter, something to write with? Yes, sir. All right, we're going to specifically page four. If you don't have it, then what you have to do is click on the link and find this one part. But what, we, what I did was I, I already have page four right here, what we're gonna read, okay? So if you have it, if you don't have the book, then um, you need to take notes in your notebook. Okay, so you have your notebook, Brooke? Oh, that kind of rhymed. Do you have your notebook, Brooke? Okay. Kalahi Kiola, we are on the moon. Okay, Kala, we are in our book, page four. We're gonna draw. We're gonna write Geredes. Okay, so I'm gonna start us off right here where um, page four starts. Um, we're gonna read, everybody's gonna read a paragraph, I guess. Okay, so I'll start off um, where you know, everybody there. So in your, in your notebooks or in your packet, it's this page, page four. So go ahead and find it. And then we're gonna start writing and drawing. As we read this, I want you to underline highlight important phrases that jump out at you, okay? That, that really, um, that call to you. All right, so here we go. You know how the past emerges with the present in the telling of some Polynesian legends? Whether something happened a thousand years ago or yesterday makes no difference. The Polynesian is merely the living edge of that great body of ancestral spirits. All the countless lives that have been lived before. The events of our lives lives are, uh, sorry, the events of their lives are part of his life. He feels that he has participated. So it is with the drum. Okay, so let's go back, right? We have this story about these two tutu ladies, right? Where are they? Kalahikiole, you remember? Where are they? Hayden, you want to help him out? I believe it is Tahiti. Very good, Tahiti. Very good. Um, if you know anything about Tahiti, it's made up of many islands. And so they're going to go island hopping, right? Okay. And why are they there, Alicia? What, why are they there, those two, two ladies? Um, one of the sisters had dreams about this old man and the, was it a tiki statue or whatever? Yeah. He, she drew it with crayon, right? Yeah. yeah. She drew it with a crayon. So what we have here is we have this story, right? And this first part, right, is talking about this paragraph that we're pointing out, right? It's talking about um, them meeting the tutu man that they're, they, they were seeking out. Okay, it's very important. So what is something that you would highlight here? Okay. Caleb, what was something that you highlighted? All the countless lives that have been lived before, the events of their lives are part of his lives. Very good. Okay, so I need you to draw a circle on the side. You guys are like, what? Yeah. 
a circle and then a line that's like a range, you know, a line with two arrows going side to side by side, like side to side. We're drawing, come on, where's my, where's my thing? Okay, so circle and then we have this. Oh my gosh, there, circle, timeline. Okay, so what we have here is the perception of time, of history. Okay, this first paragraph is talking about um, how different people see time. Okay, so write that down. Time, perception of time, how people look at time. This is really important because this is more of a, like an indigenous um, and native people's way of seeing time, right? That time is not a start and a stop. That time is not linear, right? Where you have this like, oh yeah, World War II started in 1939 and ended in 1945. Like there's, that's really a Western construct of history, right? Same like how you think of, Oh, when does the Hawaiian timeline start, right? And most people will say, oh, when Cook discovered Hawaii. And you're like, oh, hold the phone. When would you guys start the Hawaiian timeline? Kumulipo. Kumuta. Mahalo. Kumulipo, the story of Haloa, right? Um, there's multiple creation stories. And that's the cool part, right? There's multiple repositories of understanding, of knowledge, especially um, when thinking about Kumulipo, the story of Haloa, the story of um, Pele, right? Riding a sailing canoe over with the egg, right? You guys know which one I'm talking about. There's a whole picture of that and her brother, the shark, following, no? Okay, there's multiple creation stories. And that is the really cool part about, about the Hawaiian culture is that everything's accepted and it's cool, right? Multiple perspectives, very cool. So anyway, let's look. We have a circle, okay? So is time for, in the, in the Hawaiian culture, looking more like a, a cyclical in meaning it pops up people right that came before you are with you always right so this first paragraph talking about right whether something happened a thousand years ago or yesterday makes no difference why because our ancestors are with us and so sometimes you'll have these like interesting things that pop up like what well for example if you um, are in a situation where you're like, mm, maybe I shouldn't go or something tells you, maybe you should go left instead of right. And then you find out later, oh my goodness, thank goodness I listened to whatever was telling me to go left instead of right, right? Um, if you pay attention close enough, you'll hear your ancestors talking to you, possibly, right? You'll, you'll get a sense of, oh, okay, I'm, Maybe I'm not on the right path and something will just steer you just a little bit in a different direction. And that was the direction you're supposed to go, right? And so um, also looking at, you know, being at Kamehameha schools, the interesting part is that you're constantly reminded that your ancestors are with you, right? The whole thing with like um, people are, people say, you know, when we look at you, we don't see just you. We see all your ancestors standing behind you, right? Guiding you through your past. And, and that is such a, a really unique and, and I think special way to view each other. View yourself, right? That you always have those people with you. And that's cool. Okay, second paragraph. Um, let's have Caleb go ahead and read these, la these next two paragraphs since they're short. As, as he's reading, go ahead and mark the text. Okay, Josh, you good? Okay. The drum, it seems to be, it seems to me, symbolize the collective power of the people. 
power, power that has been lost. As you know, the old Polynesians believed that temple drums were invested with great power when struck, their voices could summon powerful spirits. According to the old man, a, a thief from under another sky, a meteor for foreigners, I believe stole the heart from it. The drum could no longer be sounded. People drifted apart, lost contact with each other, became powerless, aimless, it was said that the drum was hidden away in a mountain. Okay, Whew. all right. What was in the first paragraph? What is something that you guys underline? Kalahikiola, you go first. What'd you underline? The drum, it seems to me, symbolizes the collective power of the people. Boom, why did you select that? Um, Kind of saying like, well, what I got from this is kind of like the drum represents culture. Okay. Um, I think we've all been there where we hear like a pahu just being, you know, drum and you, you just like want to look to see who's, who's drumming it, where's this drum, right? And why am I walking towards it, right? You want to look, right? Because there's something about a pahu that like, you just, you just like, almost like, there's a gravitational force that's pulling you and you're like, where is that? Okay. And then also like you think about like watching Mary Monarch, you watch um, even just performances where this first, just like the first two boom, boom. Right. And everybody is like ready. Right. And, and there, it's amazing that a drum has that much power. Okay. So, at the very top of this page four or in your notebooks, go ahead and draw a draw the heart of the drum. Okay, write down the heart of the drum because that's what we're talking about right now. There's mine. I know it looks like a waste basket, but you just use your imagination. Okay, and you can draw your own pahu. Maybe your heart is a little deeper in, in the pahu. Okay, but that's my heart of my drum. All righty, very good. Symbolizes collective power of the people. Why? Because I don't know, for some reason, a drum can move the masses to be in sync with each other. It's a very interesting thing. Can you write the word down? Sync, in sync. Bye, bye, bye. Just joking. I'm not gonna dance it. I'm not dancing it. I'm not dancing it. I'm not going to dance it. All right, okay. And I'm recording our class. So that's gonna be fun to watch later. Okay. All right, next. Um, we have this interesting part in the second paragraph that Caleb read beautifully to us. Okay. And that is, according to the old man, a thief from under another, um, under another sky, a metaphor for foreigners. This is very interesting. The impact of outside influences, right? Talks about stealing the heart of the drum, which is really an interesting concept, right? Write down Battle of Kuomo'o. You guys remember that Ho'ike? That was cool. Yeah, right? Hawaiians fought Hawaiians because of what, right? An influence from outside. Very interesting. People died because of an outside influence. Interesting. Hayden, your sister was in that one, yeah? Yeah, she's in all of it. She's cool. I'm a big fan. All right. I hope you are too. Yeah. Are you in performing arts too? Do you do that kind of stuff? No. What are you, a baseballer? Basketballer. 
Oh, shoot. So I played softball in high school and I actually was um, like the third string pitcher. And when I was a freshman, oh, I got to start against the junkest team in the league, La Pore Hoy. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, Hayden fifth string, okay. At least he's on the team. Um, just letting you know, that I, I got to pitch and I started and I pitched the ball over the backstop because you know in softball it's the release goes from down to up and then my catcher looked at me and was like what do I do and I go go get the ball High school has been like maybe 20, maybe 25 years ago, okay? And I still remember that till this day because I seriously died of embarrassment. I pitched the ball over the backstop. Josh, you play baseball too, yeah? Like you can just imagine, like she had to run all the way around the backstop. It was so embarrassing. My, I looked at my coach and they were just shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, sub me out, please. I also bowled the ball once because I released too early. You can bowl a softball all the way to the home plate. Needless to say, it was called a ball, not a strike. Anyway, okay. Now that I took a commercial break, let's go back. <laughs> okay, um, in the chat, what I did was I gave you a term. We're gonna learn this word today, it's diaspora. Okay, this term is really an interesting term, but it's related to, and I want you guys to put that next to the, according to the old man, and it's talking about how the drum could no longer be sounded, people drifted apart. That's referring to diaspora. So just take a really shorthanded note about diaspora, and that would just be the scattering of population, right? So we all know friends and family who've moved because Hawaii is either too expensive, right? No more jobs, or they just want to move to the ninth island, right? I mean, we know plenty of people that have moved even to like where? Washington, Oregon. Yeah, at one point my family was gonna move to Oregon and we were like, oh, hold the phone. Mm, nope, so thank goodness they did it, but yeah. So what we have here is this word diaspora. Um, there's many things that contribute to Native people leaving their homeland, right? One of them is very interesting, and that would be natural disasters. If an, a huge hurricane wipes out the land, people have to move. Another thing that is really interesting that happens with diaspora is that um, the, the sinking islands, Right? Have you heard of that? The sinking islands down in the South Pacific, right? Because of the rising sea levels, the really low level islands are sinking down and they're, um, they're becoming uninhabitable. So people have to move, right? Or, um, or another country comes in and obliterates their land like how the United States obliterated the um, islands in Micronesia, and now the Micronesians have experienced diaspora and have moved here as reparations and meaning payback for sorry we did that to your land so you can stay here. Okay, it's really sad um, what happened as a result of that. So, anyway, all right, let's move on. Um, this big paragraph, Kalahi Kiola, thank you so much for volunteering. Could you? read this paragraph when the sisters asked <clears throat> when the sisters asked why they were searching the old man replied that a people who do not search for what they have lost will become a lost people there will be many other searchers he predicted polynesians are moving about as never before in just the last few years he has seen people from new zealand and the cook islands from easter island from the mark 
from Tonga and Samoa. The Hawaiians came in Hokuleo, and now many Hawaiians are visiting the South Pacific, and growing numbers of South Pacific Polynesians are visiting Hawaii. And someone is building a canoe in Tahiti that they will sell to New Zealand. All are searching. Very good. Okay, go ahead and highlight um, maybe one or two sentences that really jumped off the page for you. Josh, I'm gonna call on you, so make sure you're ready to go. Um, where is Kahele Aulani? You be ready to, okay? All right, Josh, you ready? What did you select? What did you highlight? I highlighted that Polynesians are moving about as never before. In just, okay. the, in just the last few years, he has seen people from New Zealand and the Cook Islands. Okay. All right. This is that. Okay. Very good. Why? Oh, we noticed that like in NFL football games. Oh, Brada Man has a first name that is on Hawaiian name, right? Or the kicker for, I don't know, he played for, he kicked for, I think, the Texans last year. Um, pretty cool, right? You see them on, on like NFL teams, you see like Hawaiian, Polynesian last names. It's pretty cool, right? They're all moving around. Especially, I think a while back, um, maybe like three or four years ago, there was a, a rugby player from New Zealand who played for San Francisco as a running back. Do you guys remember that? It's pretty cool. He would like bounce off of tackles. It was super cool. Okay, very good. Um, anybody else? Uh, Kahele Olani, what about you? What did you choose from this paragraph? Um, I chose people who do not search for what they have lost or become lost people. Very good. Go ahead and highlight that, please. Everybody should highlight that because it's worth um, noting, especially um, if you want to add this to maybe the call to action for your research paper at the very end. Okay, everybody did that? Kalahi Kiola, you went on a huaka'i? Somebody's at my house and I don't know who it is, but Ooh. my dad. Oh, I'm like, don't answer it. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> what we have here, okay, um, is the quote that I actually wanted you to point out. Okay. Um, we're searching. If you don't search, you're lost, right? Um, so this is really speaking to also our journeys, knowing our histories, right? Knowing your culture, right? And every once in a while, I come across a student that maybe is rejecting their own history or is rejecting their own culture. And it's okay. Like as a teacher, like I'm not here to force anything on you guys, but I'm here to provide opportunities for you guys to learn. The one thing that I do want to point out and and what makes it okay for me to hear some kids say they don't want to be forced to learn the Hawaiian culture or Hawaiian history um, is that I understand that people are all on different um, stages of their journey. And for some of you guys, you might just be at the very bottom of the mauna and you need to, you, and some of you guys are like, you know, traveling up towards the mauna and looking at the looking at everything from a, a truly Hawaiian perspective, which is super cool, okay? Or maybe a little bit of both, which is really cool, okay? But this is where we're at with our research, right? We're searching for knowledge so that we can make sure we're well-grounded in what we know, okay? So I kind of gave you the answer to your response, ish, okay? Ish, okay. All right, last part, let's go ahead. Um, Kahele uh, go ahead and read the last two paragraphs for us since they're tiny. Only, oh wait, only when a great many people are searching, 
Will the heart of the drum be found? There will be a great expectation. Oh, and people will be listening, not deaf as they have been. And there will be a great turmoil in the heavens and a heaping of clouds and blazing lightning and lightning will strike the mountain and the drum will sound. And the drum sounds, everyone who is Polynesian, wherever they may be in the world will hear and become one people again. Very good. Thank you. All right. From these two paragraphs, what I want you to do is on the side, go ahead and write a question. What question do you have? We're going to share our, out our questions in about two minutes. So write a good question. What is a question that that is um, that surfaces when you read these two paragraphs? All right, question. Kalahi Kiola, you go first, buddy. Uh, question, question, question. Kala, be on task, buddy. Um, Caleb, go ahead. Caleb, what's your question? Still thinking of one. What? Who has a question? Okay, thank you, Hayden. Can you please go? Okay, so it says in the second paragraph, and when the drum sounds, everyone who is Polynesian, wherever they may be in the world, will hear it and become one people again. Um, well, my question is, isn't like, didn't the Polynesian people kind of split up and we all have our own cultures now? Like, and how, is, how does that work? Like, how are we going to become one again when we weren't one in the first place? We all have our own, you know, types of cultures right. and ways of thinking. Yeah, totally. Um, so I think this whole people become one again is a really interesting perspective to hold. Um, I don't know if if you've ever been to like Aotearoa, which is New Zealand, but if you ever get a chance to go, um, go visit the like the Marae, which is like kind of like the center of um, like the each Maori tribe has a Marae, which is this kind of like the sacred place, like the heart of their community. Or like if you visit the schools or anything like that, it's very interesting. When they know you're from Hawaii, it's like an automatic, like it feels like you've returned home or that, you know, you haven't seen your cousin in a long time and you're home and you can just feel this connection. It's really cool, actually. So I've been to um, Aotearoa three times twice to paddle and once for like a school educational trip last year. And it was so interesting to see because um, our language is, is, is very similar. And so um, some, of, some of the Kumu that spoke Hawaiian um, would speak and, 
and the people, the students at, in the schools that we were at, they were like, holy smokes, we can understand what you're saying. It was really cool. So this whole, I guess, metaphor of becoming one, Hayden is more like a mindset. Yeah, of just like feeling like you're part of a really big family, you know, like every family has their own like personality, but then you're still family to maybe this one center. Okay. Who else has a question? Who else generated a question? Josh, what's your question? I do not have one. Okay, so as we're talking and going through this, everybody, if you don't have a question, then you should be looking to see, okay, what question can I ask, right? Which part am I going to specifically focus on? Look at the, the second to the last paragraph. Right? What does searching look like? Even that would be a really good question. What would that searching look like for all these people to search? What are they searching for, right? So the symbolism of the drum is an incredible, and, and I think deep symbol, right? It's emblematic of something bigger, right? What is the heart of the drum? Don't know. Self-identity. Mahalo. Thank you. See? So what is your question then? You, you guys, don't wait for me to add, add, like create these questions for you. I need you guys to really be able to generate questions because it provides a higher level of thinking. So, Brooke, do you have a question? Did you generate a question? Not yet, Brooke. Sorry, I couldn't think of the question. Okay. Okay. Try to see if you could come up with something like okay, what about you, Alicia? What does turmoil mean? Term ter turmoil? Yeah, you have a computer, just start a new tab. Turmoil. It's like chaos. Turmoil. Some of us are in turmoil because we are lost. You know? <laughs> yes. Turmoil is though, it's like a really, it's a really um, interesting place to be. It could be positive and it could also be negative. Like you could be in turmoil because you're trying to make changes to um, or improvements to your life. And then sometimes turmoil, you're just in this like really out of control tailspin of whatever it is, drama, of maybe negativity, just depends. Caleb, what's your question? Not yet? A little bit more time, like give me like one more minute. Okay, good. Kahele Aulani, please tell me you have a question. Kalahiki Ola, write something down, buddy. Yes, Alicia. Okay, so it says like people will be listening that not deaf as they have been. Like, does that mean like? Like, uh, man, I forgot what I was going to say now. Well, what does it mean to be, you know? Like people just didn't want to listen, I guess. Yeah. Like, what does that look like right now? Holy smokes. That looks like, yeah, I'm not interested in learning about Hawaiian history or Hawaiian culture. I'm not into that right now. Right. But when the drum starts beating, like there is this really weird reaction. You'll see it. Right. Hello, it's me. Like, I mean, 
the power of the drum is magnetic. You just like want to go there. Okay, so the symbolism of this, like the heart of the drum, I think is incredible. Okay? And heart, if you missed heart. it, what is that? Nothing. No. Or, and if you missed it, then I need you guys to go back and reread because there's a reason why these two, two, two ladies in the story jump on a plane and go try and find their dream, which is really weird, right? They're searching for this tutu man that perhaps cannot walk or doesn't have arms and legs. They're looking for this rainbow. It's a really interesting story because things like this are like, nah, that never happened, right? No, it happened, right? What do you mean the Hokulea had to go and break the tapu? Right? And then like let go of the, the steering paddle. There is a Hawaiian name for that. I don't remember what it is. It's not coming to my mind. Hoi. I know, but the really big one. There's a big there's a, there's another name for it. But yeah, the hoi. And it the person let it go and it just drifted through, right? That little opening and broke the tapu, which is really interesting. Really interesting. Okay. I'm looking at the word expectation. There will be a great expectation. And that is where I would have asked my question. What is the expectation? What are you expected to do once you hear the drum? Go ahead and write that question down since we're having a hard time. What is the expectation once you hear the drum? I'm going to write that question down too. See, it just happens. You talk things through and that's how you figure things out. Okay, what is it? Somebody tell me what they think. What is that expectation once you hear the drum? Yes? Uh, that the people will come together as a whole and like, I, I don't know. I don't know. That, 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 yeah. Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah. Cool, very cool. All righty. So I think we've spent enough time on this. What I'm doing is I'm exercising your brains. Some of you guys need to warm it up a little bit more some of you guys need to take an extra lap and then stretch okay but what we have here is we have this question at the very bottom in black it says what is the point and purpose of reading the story the short story the seekers by herb Kane? i want to explicitly point out here that you see how i word the question i word it that way so you can respond in that same way right everybody see that question you need to look at your screens right and it says right there. So you're going to say, right, the point and purpose of reading the short story, The Seekers by Herb Kane is blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm explicitly telling you, this is how you word your topic sentence, right? Why am I telling you this? Because you have five body paragraphs to write. And each topic sentence, holy smokes, you just got triggered your yawn. You caught, you caught uh, Hayden's yawn. Alicia or something or vice versa. It's so crazy. Okay. So your five body paragraphs need to start with the topic sentence. That's why we're practicing this. Okay. Everybody clear. Okay. Next. The next question you need to respond to is why do you think he wrote, he meaning Herb Kane wrote this story for the next generation to read. Right. And how does this story relate to searching for information and knowledge for your research paper and more importantly for your foundational knowledge okay this is due it's worth five it's worth 20 points this was actually due um last week but um i made a mistake and i didn't click on this one thing so that you could submit your work but now that everybody's all caught up you can do this. It's closed on Friday because I need you guys to make sure you have time to write your essays. So go ahead in your planner. Show me your planner. Show me the money. Okay, very good. And write it down. 
the seeker's response due Friday. Yes, thank you. Muhalo. Yes, Josh. Plan that thing out. Seeker's response due Friday. Don't tell me you never know and don't ask me for an extension. Thank you. Okay, so right now, I mean, every little bit you do, every move you make, every breath you take, I'm watching you. And so what that means is that, holy cow, I don't know, this class, like I don't sing in any other class, but this class, it's so crazy. I don't know why. Um, what I'm telling you guys is this. You guys are, are building your letters of recommendation by the way you step up and you take on challenges. Why? Because maybe when you're a senior, you could email me and say, Kumu, could I have a letter of recommendation? And you're gonna say, you're gonna, you're gonna say, because you know, I really did well in your class. Or I really sucked and then I got better. And you helped me grow. And I would like you to write me a letter of recommendation. I say, sure. But if you baboos this thing throughout your entire ninth grade year, and if I have you, I don't know if you want to have me for 10th grade, but if I have you for 10th grade, I know, I know. Some of you guys are like, just know that you're writing your letters of recommendation, okay? And um, for some of you guys, like I see on the screen, I would definitely write you a letter of recommendation. Some of you guys are working on it. You got some of you guys are working on revising your letters of recommendation and that's okay. The point is that you grow. Okay. The point is that you improve and I need you guys to do that. So let's start with the response for the seekers is due on Friday. Okay. Got it. You guys know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to all of you guys. Okay, good. All right. Let's hit the next button. <laughs> Holy smokes class. I think you guys are my favorite headache. You guys drive me nuts. But it's okay because that's the personality of this class. All right. So believe it or not, you see this bitmoji. I actually have that outfit. <laughs> I actually do have glasses. Here they are. Your next class. What? Should I dress up as my bitmoji? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I don't know. That's a gray sweater and it's hot. Okay. So wait, I'm... wait. I, I have a I have a funny story. Okay. Just you know, how okay. you asked in the beginning. We can so take my a mom's... break, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So my mom's a teacher, right? She's a yes. teacher like you. And she said that all the teachers have to make their own bit, bit emojis. And now whenever she texts me, like, go do the dishes, she always texts me with the bit emojis, like it's so cringe. Oh my god. Okay, so speaking of moms with bit emojis, my mom is this like pure Japanese lady, okay? And she made her bit emoji. And for some reason, her bit emoji has blonde hair. And she texted to us all in the sister chat. And we all, Ma, you don't have br blonde hair. She goes, it's light brown. I'm like, Ma, it doesn't even look like you. And like my mom's emoji, bit emoji game is all all funny kind. I mean, it's just like, so I feel you. That's funny. No, um, some people created virtual classrooms. Okay. I teach ninth and 10th grade. I don't have time for that. But if you're elementary school, like if you're, what, what grade does your mom teach? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Do you have another one? <laughs> if I ever see your mom, I'm gonna just, we're just gonna have to text each other bit emojis. Okay, whatever. All right, so let's get to writing the first draft. For those of you guys who haven't done or completed your gathering your resources and your facts and then finished, if you didn't finish your outline, you have major things to do today, okay? Because we have to move on. As you know, 
um, there's four of you that finished. Is that right? Only four? Hold the phone. Mm, hang on. Huh. Hayden K, where is yours? My dog ate it. Oh my gosh. I'm sending you a bit moji. Okay. Thank you, Kalahi Kiola. Mahalo for your Hana. Nice job. Okay. So anyway, what we are going to do, okay, is this. I'm going to just share my screen with you because I'm going to talk you through this. Um, and then you have to, everybody have their um, tablets. We're going to be writing in cursive. Just joking. Does anybody write in cursive? Does anybody know how to write in cursive? They really? In elementary. Oh, uh, Josh, you know how. At least sign your guy's name in cursive. Oh, okay. Uh, eventually, if you ever buy your own house, you're going to have to sign your name choke time. So make sure you get your fancy signature going on. Okay. All right. Like I said, I was going to share my screen. So I'm going to do it right now. All right, so what we have here is this writing the first draft. There's my bitmoji. So um, what I want you guys to do is go ahead in your notes, just write writing in the first draft. And then we're gonna go through this exercise together. As you're gonna see, it's gonna relate to asking a question, but I don't know, we never have our question thinking caps on. So we're gonna try again. So this is just an example. All right, you're going to turn your research topic into a question. Okay, and there's a big reason for that. So go ahead and write down just your topic. It should be like one word, maybe a phrase. Write it down. Josh, go. Write it down. Write down your topic. Okay, remember this is your environmental justice slash sustainability topic. So make sure you don't choose Ford trucks. Now, I need you to turn your topic into a question. So the point that you're trying to make is why, why is this important? So if you look at my, my bitmoji, it's pointing to the question, right? I made a question from clean water. So I said, how can we ensure clean water for our future? Okay, so go ahead and create your own question for your research paper. Okay, how's it going? I'm afraid to ask. Everybody have their questions? Okay, Caleb, what's your topic and then what's your question? Water harvesting. Oh, what shoot. Okay, good. And? And uh, um, it's how can we improve water harvesting? Okay, yeah. How can, can, can you add viable? How can we make water harvesting a viable solution for our future, that'd be good. Viable in meaning possible. Or you can maybe say possible, depends. I don't wanna like write your sent your question for you, but I kind of did. Okay, who's next? Who's ready? Ahele Alani, you? You ready? Um, my name is, how can we limit tourism's negative effect of the environment? Can you tell me what your topic is? Um, it's how, oh, it's um, how tourism affects the environment. Right. The impact, the implications of tourism. Okay. 
Um, I might want to go back and see your outline just because it it seems like a really broad topic. So is it related to what is it related to? Um, um, environment like it, trash what yeah I think yeah it's like I don't know because I was writing about like pollution and like oh everything else okay comes with. okay maybe it will work as long as like by the time you get you know through your paragraphs you kind of focus it a little bit more okay all right kalahi keola you um why we should switch to organic crop farming oh yeah that's right um okay I guess that works. I mean, because you're going to be answering the why. Yeah. Okay. All right, Josh, what about you? Did you shrug your shoulders? I didn't catch the gesture. Ah! Oh, you need to look you need to go and like make sure you get a topic because the all these assignments are going to start stacking up okay come on um yes alicia can i go to the bathroom can you share your topic and question first um so my topic was uh rehabilitation of forests and um how can we rebuild our native forests to i didn't finish it yet um to what to ensure to ensure what the water, what is it called? The watershed? Oh, oh. yeah. Aquifer, yeah. Thing, Aquifer yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. So write that down. And then um, while you're at the bathroom, everybody's going to be answering this question because that's going to turn into the thesis statement. Okay. So go mute yourself, please. Okay. Thank you. Never know. You never know. We might have an eruption. Okay. Just, just joking. All right. Do I have a bathroom story for you? I'm not going to tell you, but I do. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Okay. Now, what I need you to do is answer your question in one sentence because that turns into your thesis statement for your introduction paragraph. Everybody good on that? You see how we're walking through this? Josh, you better be looking like Google something like you got to move here. Okay. Um, Brooke, what about you? Do you have a topic? Um, yeah, my okay. topic is harvesting rainwater. Okay. Oh, good. You and Caleb could probably work together. Okay. And what was your question? Um, how can we use rainwater to make sure we have a stable and dependent water source? totally a uh, stable and safe right because that's also an issue right the safety of water like i don't know if you've drank the kona water but it tastes a little bit different than the hilo water do you guys know what i'm talking about like like i bring my own water from hilo when i go to kona like it's ah, gallons of it Okay. But it seems a little saltier. Even the Oahu water. Ooh, like when you're in Waikiki. Whoa, questionable. I think we're very lucky to be able to drink Hilo water. It's sweet. It's yummy, 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 yummy. Oh, no. No, no. <sighs> okay. Okay, answer the question. Answer your question.
Alicia, did you answer your question? Hurry up, hurry up. Josh, do you have a topic? What is it? Don't say rainwater. Urban food development. Right, that's what I thought you were gonna do. Something I with food. I forgot it. <laughs> you know, we cannot be having kupuna hour. I can have kupuna hour, but you cannot have kupuna hour, okay? I mean, come on. All right, good. So you need to like really jam this today, okay? That's really a good topic. This whole food thing, we can't get our Pringles if not. It's be crisis mode here. What is it like $2 a can now? Before it was like 99 cents. You don't know. You don't. I think it's $1.60. Oh, okay. I guess it depends too. KTA might be a little bit more. Walmart might be really cheap. I like Target. Yeah, Target. Mm -hmm. I love that place. Oh my God, but currently it's Ronaville, so like. What? Ronaville. Oh, it is? Yeah. I don't know that. How do you know that? You better not be spreading rumors. No. No, no they had cases in Target. Yeah, that was like last month. It's still. It's, it's coming back around? Probably. Mm -hmm. But still. Okay. A glass, my twin. I don't, I don't want the Rona. Thank you. Me neither. Okay. All right. Let's look at this. Everybody should have um, a response to the question. And that's going to be your thesis statement. So when you look at your outline, go ahead and pop open your op outline. Okay. That's where you're going to write that in there. Some of you guys didn't have anything for your introduction. I was like, mm. Okay, so the hook, the bridge, and the thesis, right? So in the bridge, you should mention something about environmental justice or sustainability, just so that you have this link. The hook, though, can be really anything. It could even be the question, but I think that's kind of lame. So you might want to come up with something, right? You may want to mention the Lorax, but, you know, that might be a starting point. Or maybe you mentioned on October 15th, the state opened up Hawaii for tourism. Something, something that will catch the person's attention, the reader's attention. But that was for Kahele Aulani, by the way. You guys are working on different topics, so find something. Yeah. Kahele Aulani, maybe like you could say like the first five week, the first five days of Hawaii opening, over 40,000 people came to Hawaii. You want to talk about an out of control flood? <laughs> yeah, maybe that would be your metaphor, Kahele Aulani. Okay, so just thinking out loud for you. So that I can show other kids how to think. Just joking. The thought process, not to think, you guys think, you guys always think, just maybe not about certain things. All right, so I'm gonna give you a gift right now. And when I say gift, I mean makana to the fullest extent. Why? Because I'm gonna give you three tips on how to write a proper uh, first draft. Number one, first present, follow your outline, but make adjustments when you need to, okay? You don't have to stick stick to the outline, but make sure you kind of stick to the outline. Okay, if you don't like uh, the piece of evidence that you added, then change it. That's why you have all the links. That's why you have to gather. Make sense? So the next thing, tip number two, makana number two. Don't get bogged down on saying it perfectly. Just get your thoughts down, okay? on that Google Doc. Okay, Hayden, I know you wanna say things really like at a high level, but because it's your first draft, you just get it all down and then we'll go back and revise. Okay. And the last makana I'm giving you is tip number three. Return to your thesis to make sure you stay on topic. 
Okay. Don't jump on, you know, your four wheelers and go off roading. Stay the course. Never mind doing donuts either. Don't over, over, over explain yourself. Make your point and drive on. Do you see how I just made an extended metaphor for you guys? Okay, I'm, I'm kind of doing that intentionally because you're going to be adding these kind of metaphoric references throughout your paper. Okay, so figure something out there. All righty. Hit the next button. Okay, follow me. I was going to wrap a song, but I did not. No, no. Follow me. Okay. First draft research paper. This is where you're going to be submitting your first draft. It's worth 20 points. Do it. So you guys who did your outline and gathered research, give me a high five. Boom. Very good. Okay, and what we have here is we have, um, we're going to use the MLA report template. Kalahi Keola, we're not going off on our high fives, okay? You gave me like 50 high fives. Okay, so somebody's at my house, but I can't go to the door because obviously I'm here. So what we want to do is do this. Go to your drive and select Google Docs. We're doing this all together. Josh, follow me. Okay, go to Google Docs. Everybody do it. Okay. Um, what the heck was this? I need to go to Google Docs. Ugh. Go to your waffle box and then go to Docs there. Okay, now you can select your template. So if you look up here, there's the template. There it is, MLA report. You see that? Select that one. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to have somebody share their screen. Who wants to share their screen? Oh, Hayden, thank you so much for raising your hand. Okay, so Hayden, go ahead and share your screen with your MLA report. Josh, do this too, yeah, so you have it already. Yeah, all right. Hayden, share share your um, report MLA template with us and I'll walk you through it. Okay, everybody, we're going to just follow Hayden. We're just gonna follow Hayden. Okay, but write your own name. So let's start at the header first. Go to the header. That's not the header, that's the header. Okay, no. By the one, by the one, double click there. Okay, put your cursor to the left of the one. Everybody do the same, we're following along. Move the cursor to the left of the one. Okay, now write your last name, okay. So everybody should write their last name and then put a space and then leave the one. Don't delete it, don't change it, so do that. Okay, now get out of the header and go to the heading. Double click there. Okay, now fill in your name. Thank you. My name, Miss Kabatu. Thank you. English nine. Okay, and then go ahead and follow the template. Today is the 28th, October, 2020. The pressure of typing correctly for everybody. Okay, very good. Look at that. Okay, next, the title of your research, of your report. Um, delete that and let's write a proper title. Okay, it's just a draft, but I need you guys to make sure, ooh, Undo. Yeah, there you go. Just type something. But please don't call it my first ninth grade research paper. Okay. Not that. Funny. Funny. You're funny. Yeah, you're funny. 
dating is so funny. Oh, no, 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 pukey. Okay, we wanna come up with maybe the metaphor, right? So renew, you're, oh no, don't do that. We wanna talk about renewable energy. So what is that, right? I don't know what language that is. Okay, we're gonna have to come up with something and then you come up with something better later okay so maybe you start with renewable energy because it's puke worthy and then we're going to revise that capital e okay everybody have some kind of lame title going on because you're going to re revise that later okay now let's go down and just delete all the other words down below. Below the title, just delete it all. Oh. The one thing that you need to make sure though is when you start to type, oh, leave the work cited. Sorry. Oh. Okay, leave, just leave that. Yeah, very good. Now, under renewable energy, go ahead and click enter, enter, return, return. There, okay, good. So just make sure when you start typing that it's not justified center, yeah? Because sometimes it does that when you have the title like that. Okay, we wanna make sure it's justified to the left. All right, and you should be ready to go. But before you do that, go ahead and Put the cursor by work cited, please. Okay, and hit the return button. And then let's go to insert. Oh, above, above, go above, above the, yeah. We're gonna create a page break. You guys know how to do that? Go to insert, page break, down there. No, okay, yeah. Okay, good. So what happens is when you have a page break, it stays on its own page by itself. You know how you type and then it pushes it down? It's not gonna do that anymore. It's just gonna be its own page, okay? Then you're gonna type. All right, you can stop sharing your screen. Everybody should have that. Can I get a thumbs up? Everybody should have that. Thank you. I know pressure, yeah, to type properly. Thanks for being you. All right, I got a shaka bra. Okay, good. Now. Let's go to Canvas, okay? Actually, yeah, go to Canvas and find that one uh, part where it says, I'm gonna share my screen, okay? So where this is, is in um, your module. So you gotta look for the MLA format. So go, go back into your modules. It's like maybe a couple of weeks above where we are right now and find the MLA format. Okay, everybody found it? So remember about two weeks ago, I told you, this is your reference sheet. So what we did was we already form, formatted our paper so that you have it in MLA format already. Cool, yeah? You're welcome. Okay, next. What I want you to do is go to this second one because this is what we wanna focus on for this week because it's the embedding quotes part. I noticed when I'm looking, when I looked at your outline, some of you guys forgot to write in a signal phrase or what is also called um, a lead in. Like, you know, you hear according to this article, whatever, right? So and so declares blah, 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 right? We're gonna stay away from said states and says, okay? No S words. What we wanna look at is at the very bottom where it says, how do I integrate my quotations, okay? so need you to make sure that you remember to use the signal phrases when you start to introduce your direct quote, your evidence. Can you write that in your notes? Add signal phrases, no S words. So if you look, you can say something like, according to Dr. Johnson, 
he, I don't know what you want to say. He confirms that the rising tide, whatever, blah, 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 right? So that's the evidence. You need to make sure you have those signal phrases in there. And then you also need to make sure that if there is a page number, you got to add that to your in-text citation, right? So when you look at this, here it is. You see that 43, right? You see that 43? That's the in-text citation. Um, if you have an author's name, but you don't put it in to the signal phrase, then you need to put the author's name before the 43 and then put a space, no comma. Okay, questions on this? Uh, right here is your work cited. So make sure that it's in alphabetical order. Okay, and that you follow the format of this. Okay, questions? What time is it? 10.43. What time is lunch? Okay, we're done in about 10 minutes. Okay. So what I'm gonna have you guys do, there's four of you guys who are done with your outline. Okay. Start typing like crazy. You guys can leave. Those of you guys who are not tall with your outline, stay here. Alicia, type, okay? You should be able to type like two paragraphs right now. Okay, Kalahi Kiola, you too, okay? Caleb? Okay, okay bye. Don't forget to membean. Oh my gosh, where's Brooke? Okay, you too. Let's make sure, okay? Where's your outline? Where did you gather information already? Josh, what about I did. you? You did? Okay, so go ahead, start plugging in like crazy now. Okay, Josh, what about you? Where's your uh for the research paper? Do, is that like just for our own? Or do we need to turn it in so you can see it? What research paper? The one that you're writing? The first draft? No, the, I mean, the not the paper, but like the... the oh, the gathering the, information? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's part of the assignment. Oh, okay. uh, oh my gosh. What is that? Noise? I thought it was like... Oh, I have construction like right outside my window, so... Oh, how fun. Yeah. Where is that in the modules? It says gathering. There, right there. It's in module 2.2, .2, gathering research. Shaila, do you see it? It's worth 25 points. I see it. Okay. What about you, Josh? I, you see it? I did it, but I didn't know, like, because you told us to make our own copy of it, and I was like, oh, it's just like just for us to do. No. Sounds like I a did it anyway. So a, a giant mechanical caterpillar, or something. Oh yeah, they're like digging these holes to put in a big fence. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's like a jackhammer or something. Oh. Okay, I've reopened that assignment. Okay, you need to turn it in by Friday because you gotta move on. Like you guys are behind already, okay? Do you see, do you see Brooke by you, Josh? Is, is Brooke by you? Yeah, tell her to get back on. She's not. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Hayden, let me see your outline. Show me the money. I did not uh, do that. 
So what you need to do is start plugging in, right? So you already have like your thesis statement. You got to figure out what you're going to put in for your hook and your bridge. Oh, there she is. Thank you. Oh, what is what is like the form or like how do we? I Where's remember you your said outline? like short. I don't. I don't have it. I only did the research on the the paper or the stuff. I didn't. Oh do my this. gosh! Are you not paying attention when I'm telling you what to do? Here, go into <laughs> go. Brooke, you too. Go into outline for a research paper. That is in module 2.2. Right? And then you should see, make a copy of this outline. Oh, yes. Okay, so make a copy. Make sure it's shareable. Make sure I can comment on it. Okay, do you see the outline? Brooke, you see the outline? I think you already did this. You already have a copy of the outline. Brooke, yeah? Right? So that's why you should have um, maybe some citations and some evidence from like the state or county of Hawaii website to call out like what they're doing, what's the need, right? And then possible solutions, okay? So what you have here is the outline. It's pretty straightforward. Do you have any questions on it? You're just plugging in notes. Josh, what about you? What's going on over there? Don't pass out, you'll be fine, Josh. <laughs> it's just notes for the outline. Hayden, how's it going? So copy from your gathering information, right? You all those like facts and statistics that you gathered, right? All you're going to do is copy and paste it into the evidence part, right? And then when you start writing out your first draft, what you're going to do is you're going to say, according to this article, right? And then you have the information already. So you're going to have to put your outline and your first draft side by side. Straightforward. Can you need to email me if you're not if you're if you're having a hard time so that we can meet tomorrow though. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. Think I think it going. is, but I mean, you know. Okay, Josh, what about you? You got to tell me now cuz we have to meet tomorrow if you don't understand. I understand what to do. Okay. So you got like two weeks work, worth of work now because now you're behind. You got to like finish the, uh, the gathering information, do the outline and complete the, the first draft. Why? Because next week we're going to revise for our second draft already. Okay. So you guys understand how this is going to compile real fast. Okay. Brooke, has you, boys, you guys can go and meet with Brooke for a little bit and then How's it going? Um, it's good. Okay. So did you gather information? Um, um, yeah, I got some. Okay. And then you plugged it into like those tables and then you copied and pasted some information that you could potentially use for your outline? Oh, um, wait, wait. You know the slides we did? Yeah. Did you finish that? It all is not there anymore. What do you what do like, you mean? Did it save? Oh no. Okay. I wonder what happened. Okay, let's go look. Excuse me, I just yawned. Do you have the slides though? Or no? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we got to go back and just plug some of the information in there. Okay. The information. 
because I thought you were working on it last time we met the slide number four. Yeah, then we talked about it. I went back on and then I, I don't know what it went. I don't know. Um, we wrote, maybe you got to type in E and S second quarter and then Brooke. Remember we saved it that way? Because what maybe what you did was you found a copy, I don't know, you found my copy or something like that. Did you find it or no? Oh, I found it. Okay, good. Yeah. So can you can you just email me the link so I can give you points for that? Okay, and then um, what else? You understand how to gather information, right? We went through that and then work on your outline. So you just plug in in phrases and then copying and pasting the information, okay? And then you're gonna write your, it's gonna be seven paragraphs, okay? Might be the ugliest paragraphs you ever write, but at least you have a starting point, okay? And then you have membing, so don't forget to do that. All right. Okay. okay. Um, we're now that you're on campus, I think you'll be able to like focus a little bit more. Okay. You have lunch. Yeah. You gotta go. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.